Hi, welcome to Conquering Chronic Illness. My name is Teresa, and today we're going to be talking about CBD, but the hemp-based kind. CBD. Controversial, is it these days? I don't know. I feel like it has gotten, um, as research has come out about its effectiveness, it's gotten less controversial, and as more states have um, approved, as more states have approved or passed laws to approve the use and make it um, not illegal, it's gotten less controversial as well. Um, I was introduced to CBD as a way to manage my anxiety without medication. Um, I'll probably put the video link right here, but I tried um, eight different anxiety medications before I found one that worked. In between psychiatrists and medications, um, I... Uh, use CBD to help literally get me through. Um, so yeah, let's talk about CBD. Why I used it, would I recommend it, all that great stuff. So in Louisiana, because that's where I live, CBD is only legal without a prescription if you're using the hemp-based kind. Um, and so it was important for me to find a CBD provider that was third party tested and verified as effective and all that great stuff. Um, so what I did was I went online to Facebook groups, um, online Reddit discussions and, and things like that to find what were the brands that were most, um, talked about as being effective and safe and also customer service because a lot of these um, companies are in state and so you're dealing with people who are a few states away or whatever. So yeah, I found a brand that I liked. I chose to use broad spectrum CBD because that was most been found to be most beneficial for people with anxiety. There are a couple of PubMed studies. There's not a ton on hemp-based CD, but there are a couple of PubMed studies on um, anxiety and CBD, hemp-based CBD. Um, it's found, I think, it's mixed with actual cannabis, with actual um, marijuana, um, if it's actually helpful for anxiety. But CBD has been found, a broad spectrum has been found to be helpful with anxiety. In some studies, it just kind of depends. Um, so it's broad spectrum because it was probably the, the easiest way to get the most potent dose so I could like start microdosing, which is what I chose to do. Instead of taking the full dose, you start microdosing to find your effective dose. Um, and basically, you get more CBD bang for your buck if you get the broad spectrum. Um, I found that it worked wonders, really and truly. It's not like anxiety medication where um, it retrains your body to be less anxious over time. It works with your body to um, like kind of calm those brain signals on that cause the over heightened anxiety. Um, it is just for situational use. Like if I woke up anxious, I take CBD and I be less anxious. I was not less anxious over time. I was less anxious while I used the CBD, which is unfortunately a downside. Like it's not addict addictive in, in the way that you can't stop using it or you have to use more of it. Um, I found that if I used the least effective dose, I could still use the same amount even over a two year period. I didn't use it consistently over two years, but I used it over a two year period. Um, but, um, it creates a sort of de dependency in which like nothing is actually getting better. Right? The hope with anxiety medication is that eventually your anxiety will get better and you'll be able to wean off of the anxiety medication. Some people can't, 
right? But for most people, that is a general idea that um, you begin to taper off of the anxiety medication um, after your body has become reacclimated and adjusted. Did not find that with CBD. Some people may find have a different um, outcome, but that was definitely not my outcome. I did find that um, it worked for anxiety. It worked for helping me sleep a little bit better. Just the broad spectrum. I didn't have to get into like edibles and gummies and things like that. Even with the hemp-based CBD, they have those. And it's just, it was really helpful in helping me manage my anxiety in between psychiatrists, in between medications that did not work. Do I still use it now? Um, I'm still working out the most effective dose for my anxiety medication. Um, I think I've probably used it two or three times in the past two months. We've increased my anxiety medication and I haven't had a need to use it since we've increased the dose of my anxiety medication. Um, before I get what um i haven't been officially diagnosed with pmdd i don't think but around my cycle i have horrible um increases in the main amount of anxiety that i experienced which is why we increased my anxiety medication and so it came in clutch around those times because most of the month i could manage well with just the anxiety medication but there were a few days out of the month where i just need to take the edge off and cbd did that for me it helped me to calm down and to relax it has a very calming effect on the body almost like a glass of wine um it just lasts longer because a glass of wine, you go to the bathroom a couple times and that's out of the system. With CBD, it had a 8, 12 hour lasting effect. I would take it in the morning and I would take it in the evening and I would be good. There would be some days where I wouldn't need to take it. Um, normally when my cycle wasn't giving me the fit, I didn't have to take it, which is great. <laughs> um, so yeah, so what are, that was why, how, why I used CBD and why it worked well for me. And that was kind of the upside for me. But there are some downsides to it. CBD has um, side effects. The main thing being for me was headaches. So if I was having a flare of fibromyalgia, what I know now was psoriatic arthritis, and I started getting a he headache, CBD would make that worse. So I'm using one thing to help the anxiety that's um, irritating another condition that I have and so I would have to make the judgment do I quit the CBD right now and wait till this flare passes and get get the rest of my body under control and just deal with the anxiety or do I keep taking the CBD and just take more medicine for the the pain that it's causing right um, I don't think I don't know for sure that it made it worse but I don't think the CBD helped the stomach issues that I was having. Uh, I was reflecting back on, um, you know, the, and and I, I go back and forth because it may not, it definitely didn't cause the stomach issues that I was having. Um, I think that had a lot to do with the kind of cross section of anxiety and fibromyalgia and autoimmune um, um, condition. Um, affecting my stomach or whatever i've noticed now that since i've taken started taking the medicine for anxiety and fibromyalgia like stomach is fine like i can eat like fruits and vegetables which is nice i don't have to just survive off grilled cheese sandwiches and crackers and things like that and jello cups which is nice um cbd definitely did not help my stomach issues even though it helped my anxiety um i don't know that it made it worse because once I started taking the anxiety medication and stopped taking, well, I don't know. I don't know. Because once I started taking the anxiety medication, I stopped taking the CBD. Um, and I noticed that my stomach got better. Don't know if it was the anxiety medication making my stomach better or not taking the CBD. You know what I mean? But I don't have those stomach troubles anymore. Not blaming the CBD, but it's something to be mindful about. There are some people who do report stomach issues with CBD. Um, what else? Cost. CBD is cost prohibitive. So um, I would get a 60 milliliter bottle cost $70 with CBD. That would probably last me 45 days to 60 days, depending on how bad my anxiety was. Um, I took anywhere from one 
to two milliliters a dose, right? And so, no, yeah. Um, sometimes I would not take it at night. And so it just kind of depends. Like if I had like a one millimeter morning day, then sometimes I had a two millimeter morning and night day. And so it just kind of depends. Um, $70 is a lot for a monthly 45 day supply of medication. In comparison, my, my anxiety medication costs $15 with insurance and a discount card. There aren't those discount cards for CBD. And so that's something to think about. Like, also, I didn't have to, when I took CBD, I didn't have to go to psychiatrist. So, like, but my insurance pays for that, right? And so if you don't have insurance, um, CBD might be a cheaper out, but if you have decent insurance, like it might be cheaper to get anxiety medication, um, more cost effective anyway. So, you know, something to think about. And then the other thing is the stigma, right? So whenever you go to the doctor, you have to tell them all the medication that you take. And it just kind of depends on the doctor who, um, how what reaction you're going to get right um and how that is going to it shouldn't but how it affects your treatment from them going forward i haven't most doctors that i've dealt with either had a positive reaction to it yeah you're taking cbd as a stopgap measure but we can do better i can help you or cbd isn't going to do anything right you're just wasting your money i didn't have anybody personally it was my concern though i didn't have anybody personally who made me feel like um they thought i was a druggie or looking for a quick fix or wasn't really trying to get help because i was taking cbd but i know there's there is definitely societal stigma that comes around taking cbd and i feel like it's abating some you know um especially as more studies come out with the benefits of uh, marijuana um, and CBD, but yeah, I wasn't getting high off the CBD because it's hemp based. It really just had an amazing calming effect and I appreciated it for what it was. Do I recommend CBD? I recommend that you, if you are considering it, that you actually do research and whenever i say do research people are always like google search but like pubmed has articles will you understand the entire draft of a pubmed article which is the governmental site on studies for all sorts of medications and diet protocols and stuff like that no but you can read the abstract right you can um use critical thinking skills around how many people were actually in the study and what types of people were in the study um i would absolutely go to some of these facebook forums honestly and truly they have had some of the most helpful information if not just from the people but from the resources that the people have like if you want to find where to go to get really good information very quickly the best place to go is there because they really do it and a lot of these moderators are really great especially in the larger groups about weeding out the boo boo caca you know the bad information the um sn snake oil um salesmen you know um and that was really helpful for me especially in the beginning it's kind of how i narrowed down which brand i was going to choose for cbd um um, they helped me get more information about what types of CBD um, are best beneficial for anxiety because there's all sorts of types of cannabis-based and hemp-based CBD, different strains and brands, and some might actually make your anxiety worse. Um, those Facebook forums and Reddit groups were really helpful. They were really, really helpful in not just giving me information, but sending me to where I could find the information. So I would recommend that and then to, and I say this, you need to have a medical, if you're considering doing something for your health, you need to have a medical provider that can kind of guide and help you. If you're like, I don't want to take anxiety medication, I'd rather take CBD because it's more natural. Not why I want to take it, but teach his own. Um, if that's the reason why, you need to have a medical profession that you can talk to about that. And I understand, like, I was in a position at one point not very long ago where I had to wait until 
it was time for uh, uh, my yearly checkup before I changed the new doctors because that's when the doctor's appointment was free, right? Or was covered under the insurance. I didn't have to pay anything out of pocket. I understand that. I understand that everybody can't just go to a new doctor whenever they want to. That is definitely something that you should consider, right? Fine. <sighs> Functional medicine doctors, especially in the South, are hard to find, but like finding not all uh, typical um, doctors, what are they called? Not all internists are of anti, you know, health um, and anti um, alternative medicine. So, you know, it takes a little bit of effort. It took me three years to find a primary physician that I was with for the past three years, and I'm going to have to find so I understand the frustration of finding a doctor that best suits you, but you really should need you. You really should bounce this off of a medical professional, <laughs> like truly. If nothing else, like if um, and they may not have the information that you need to pick the CBD that you want, but they could look at your medical history and see if it's going to be a danger to you. And that's important. For most people, CBD is absolutely safe, but don't just go doing stuff with your health. You only have one body. Please be careful. Please, for the love of goodness, be careful. Um, anything else? Oh, third party tested. I, I make sure that even my multivitamins are third party tested because with supplements, you don't really know what's in them. They're, they're not really highly regulated and it speaks a lot of a company that would pay another company substantial amounts of money to verify that their products are good, right? So yeah, any company that doesn't do that, I don't know is worth the the money to that you would pay for it. I bet a lot of times they are a little bit cheaper because they're not third, third party ch tested, but you get what you pay for. So I recommend that for multivitamins, for any sort of supplement, if it's not third party tested, it's not worth the money. And I think that is all. CBD helped me um, when nothing else did for a while. Um, I understand why people would look to some sort of alternative medicine. And so hopefully this information is helpful for you. Be careful. Talk to your medical provider. Talk to your medical provider. Do your research, but actual research, not YouTube videos. <laughs> Look at some actual peer-reviewed medical articles about CBD. Make sure whatever you decide to do is after doing research and seeking counsel from medical professionals on your own. Not from any YouTube video, including this one. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the comment section in the next video.